Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news on Detroit's west side. Six people, including three children, are rushed to the hospital after a violent rollover crash. Police say a mother was driving with her three children in the car when she was T-boned. That impact sent the other driver's car upside down. Tim Pamplin is on the scene tonight with the night cam. Medics rushing one of the victims here off to Sinai Grace Hospital after this awful collision on Detroit's west side. Linda and Mark Twain. That's 96 Greenfield area. A total of six people being transported from this two vehicle collision after a vehicle runs a stop sign, slams into a car full of children. You can hear the cries, the walking wounded, these three youngsters heading off to the hospital to get checked out after the vehicle they were in with their mother driving got T-boned by a black Impala. There you see the driver of the Impala just being placed on the stretcher. Please tell me the license plate on his car doesn't match that car. Again, six people being transported, a mother, her friend, and three young children. That is the scene on the west side with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. All right, Tim. Detroit homeowners are calling for action tonight, saying speeders keep destroying their property. They say it's been a problem for years in the Rosedale Park Historic District, and it's just a matter of time before someone gets seriously hurt. Victor Williams joins us with their message to the city. Victor. Yeah, well, the people here are understandably fed up. Cars have been known to fly around this curve for decades now, causing accidents after losing control. And just today, it happened again. On a daily, somebody speeding around this curve, not realizing the depth of it. And they come out here and they tear up the neighborhood. Shawnee it's Davis says it's gone on for far too long. Drivers with no regard for their own safety or the safety of other people who live in the surrounding homes. Usually we hear it, like as the accident happens, we hear the screeching of the tires, we hear it all, and then we come out and see. I can't even count how many uh, lamp poles have been replaced, fire hydrants have been replaced. Something has got to be done, got to be done. Damage can still be seen from a single vehicle crash that happened just hours ago. The aftermath all captured on Shawnee's cell phone. This guy. Missed the curve, hit the pole, knocked over everybody's garbage can, spun into the lady's yard across the street. And even with extreme wheel damage, this black challenger was able to flee the scene. He literally took off with his, his car messed up. Nearby residents are urging the city to do something before it's too late. I got two kids. My neighbors got four. We play out here in the summertime all the time, but we're always taking a look at our kids and watching them and it's it's because of this curve. Can we get some speed bumps? Can we get some rumble strips? Something that will stop the cars or slow them down where they're not losing control. So a police car, can we get a police car sitting here? And to make matters worse, there's a park right around the corner. Victor Williams, local four. I know exactly what you're talking about. Victor, I'm wondering what's the city saying about it? Are they doing anything? Well, they're saying that they're going to look into it and maybe see what exactly they can place out there, but it's just a matter of time before something needs to be done, especially before winter gets here. Yeah. yeah. All right, Victor, thanks. Well, maybe not winter, but it sure didn't feel like summer today. No, it sure <laughs> didn't, and we got enough rain. And now, Ben, it looks like you're tracking more scattered showers. Yeah, this is kind of a weird setup, guys, because temperatures outside in the 50s, we haven't really seen any appreciable sunshine all day, and we are still tracking thunderstorms uh, here in the southern portion of the state. Let's go to Storm Tracker, and right there along I-69 between Lansing and Flint, you see that pocket of thunderstorms, lightning strikes there, uh, still popping tonight, and there's even more activity that's starting to show up just south of there. Uh, a little bit more further in the uh, central portion of the state, you can see some of these are uh, decent little downpours uh, that are popping up there west of Jackson, and there's even more in northern parts of Indiana. A good cluster of thunderstorms starting to come out of the northern end of the state. Looks pretty angry there, uh, but we're going to show you the computer models, and this is one of the more optimistic ones that we have seen, and it does keep a lot of that stuff out of here. So uh, we're hoping that that does fade, but there's a chance that it holds together. Nevertheless, still expect to see at least some rain chances tonight. Very light stuff as we get through the day on Wednesday, maybe an area of drizzle, but temperatures are not going to be hot by any stretch of the imagination. We'll be lucky to get in the low 70s tomorrow with all of this cloud cover around. There is sunshine in the forecast and we have some warmer temperatures too and we'll check it out for you coming up in just a few minutes guys
All right, Ben. We have new exclusive poll numbers tonight, which show the race for U.S. Senate between Gary Peters and John James is tightening now two months out. Our Mara McDonald live downtown tonight. And Mara, what do those numbers look like? Well, Jace, those numbers are tight, like you said, and we're talking about a margin of error race here. Bottom line, both these guys are polling in the low 40s. Right now, anybody can win this thing. Here's the breakdown. The margin of error on this poll is plus or minus four. Peters and James are within it. Anybody that tries to tell you the U.S. Senate race is decided in Michigan isn't looking at the numbers. This is close. If you look at the presidential numbers here, Biden is up over Trump by five. The margin is narrower for Peters James, which is attributable to several factors. Any first term senator running in Michigan is going to have a hard race the first time around. And Gary Peters is having a hard race with a very aggressive challenge from John James. Our pollster sees this race as lean Democratic at this point because of Biden's edge here currently. And he believes top of the ticket outcome will directly impact this race. That said, it's gonna be a closely fought race. Uh, and you know, John James is a talented candidate with good money uh, in terms of fundraising. And so I think this is gonna be spirited all the way to election day. Back here live, we have done an extensive amount of polling here, asking all sorts of questions, and we're going to be rolling them out both today and tomorrow. For example, how do you feel about Black Lives Matter? What about the whole idea of defunding the police? And how would you grade Governor Whitmer? Coming up tomorrow, we're going to address all of that. And of course, we always put all the data online on clickondetroit.com so you can wade through it at your leisure. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. All right, Mara, and some of the numbers she broke down earlier today, the presidential race. Michigan will be getting visits from both Joe Biden and President Trump in the next 48 hours. Former Vice President Biden will be making a campaign stop in Warren tomorrow at 1.15 in the afternoon. Then on Thursday night, President Trump will be speaking at an airport hangar near Saginaw. Today, the state reporting 441 new cases of COVID-19 with one additional death. And tonight's headlines, a major coronavirus vaccine trial being conducted by drug giant AstraZeneca has been halted because of an unexplained illness in one of the volunteers. It will remain suspended until the company investigates what it is calling a routine check. Closer to home here, Michigan State University says 124 students have reported positive for the coronavirus in the past week. The university says nearly all the students live off campus. And for the first time since March, both indoor pools and gyms will be allowed to reopen tomorrow. Gyms will be limited to 25% capacity. And with gyms reopening tomorrow and other businesses still waiting for the green light, such as movie theaters, there are a lot of questions for Governor Whitmer. She'll be live tomorrow on Local 4 News Today to answer some of those questions with Everod and Rhonda. That's tomorrow beginning at 6 a.m. Tonight, several elected officials are calling for an independent investigation into allegations of Detroit police violence against protesters. Today, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, State Senator Stephanie Chang, and Detroit City Council members Mary Sheffield and Raquel Castroneda Lopez all sent a letter to Mayor Mike Duggan and Police Chief James Craig demanding an independent investigation into excessive use of force by officers against protesters and members of the media. The letter comes just days after a federal judge issued a temporary restraining order banning officers from using tear gas and batons against peaceful protesters. And tonight, Chief Craig is responding to all of this in a letter. He released a statement reading in part, uh, he's responding to that letter, I should say. It's unfortunate that these representatives have chosen to repeat a number of false claims in their letter without verifying the facts. What really disturbs me is that when the protesters assaulted Detroit police officers with rocks, railroad spikes and fireworks, never once did these representatives ask for an independent investigation into their violent criminal activity. Still ahead, a driver going 100 miles per hour on a busy freeway all of a sudden starts shooting at cars. There was a big boom in glass that shattered everything. A split-second decision this woman made that very likely saved her life. Senate Republicans unveil a new coronavirus bill. What's not included, that's already a deal breaker for Democrats. But first, vandals target a Macomb County business, and it might have to do with the political yard signs outside. 
the message the vandals left behind next.